Hello everyone, my name is Rahul Nirmal, and in this video I'm going to be talking about cryptographic hashes. These are like unique signatures made for each individual file on your PC. And when you make even the slightest modification to a file on your PC, that cryptographic hash or signature will change dramatically. This is very useful for cybersecurity because unfortunately, many files, when you send them over the internet, can be intercepted by a hostile third party and then uh, injected with uh, malicious code or changed uh, in other unsavory ways. This is called a man-in-the-middle attack. In the beginning of this video, I'm going to be using something called Windows PowerShell in Windows 10 to generate and then compare cryptographic hashes for three different text files as well as one installation file of a program I like to use called ImageBurn. And then we'll see if any of these files have been modified in any way. And if they have, then we would know to discard them. And then at the end of the video, instead of using Windows PowerShell, I'll be using a free piece of software downloaded from the Windows App Store as an alternative to generating and then comparing hashes for files. So without further ado, let's go over to my Windows 10 PC. And All right, so I'm at my Windows 10 desktop and I'm gonna begin by launching Windows PowerShell. Just gonna navigate my mouse here and type in PowerShell and it'll pop up right here and I'll just click it to launch it. I've navigated my Windows PowerShell to a directory on my C drive called Rahul. The reason being is there are some files there we wanna take a look at. So here we see we have a PNG file and three text files. The PNG file is a letter from a boyfriend, Harry, to his girlfriend, Susan. Let's take a look at it. So the email reads like this. Hi, Susan. Attached to this email is a text file name, loveletter.txt. It expresses my love for you. It's SHA-256 cryptographic hash is as follows. Then we have a very long string. When you receive this file, please find its SHA-256 hash using any utility. If the hash is different from the above, this means someone has tampered with this file using a man-in-the-middle attack. In that case, please ignore that file and delete it. Regards, Harry. So let's take a look at the contents of loveletter.txt. And it reads as follows. Hello, Susan. I wanted to tell you that I adore you. You are the light of my life, Harry. So let's say Susan receives that email from Harry with that text file attached, and she wants to find out the hash of that file. So she would do this as follows. She would type in this command, get-file hash, and then the file name, loveletter.txt. When she hits enter, we'll see it's using the SHA-256 algorithm, and this is the hash. And when we look at his letter, we'll see that it matches. So that means that it has not been tampered with in any way. So we can tell that no attack has happened and its integrity was maintained. Now, let's suppose Susan has a jealous ex-boyfriend and he is able to intercept the email that Harry sends to Susan and modifies the love letter that was the attachment in that email. So let's take a look at that modified love letter. It reads as follows. Hello, Susan. I wanted to tell you that I hate you. You are the darkness in my life. Harry. So we can see that it, the message and its tone is the complete opposite of the original. And if Susan would receive this, she would probably break up with Harry and get back together with her ex-boyfriend. So let's suppose she receives this instead of this, and she wants to calculate the hash to see if it does match what Harry had put in his email. So we'll put the same command, get dash file hash, and then love letter modified by hacker.txt. And this is the hash as follows. And we can see that it is very different from the hash that Harry had sent Susan. So Susan would know that a man in the middle attack had occurred and that she would disregard that message and immediately delete it, thus saving their relationship. One more thing I'd like to demonstrate in this exercise is how even the smallest change to a file can completely change its hash value. So let's look at this third file, love letter with extra space at end, and then the original love letter. So upon first look, both files look to be the exact same. The only difference between this one, as you can see by the name, is I've placed an extra blank space right after Harry. So let's take a look at what hash is generated just by adding that one extra space. And this is the hash value generated by that third file. 
And when we compare it to the hash value of the original, we'll see once again, just like the second file that was modified by the jealous ex-boyfriend, it is completely different. And we can see that just adding one extra space can completely change the hash value, even though both files may look completely identical to the naked eye. Now I'm going to dive into a practical and real world use you can use for comparing cryptographic hashes. A software I like to use to author optical disks on my Windows 10 PC is ImageBurn. So right now I'm at their website, imageburn.com, and I went to the downloads tab. And this is the downloads page. And here you see that they provide three different hashes using three different algorithms for their setup program. The reason they do this is unfortunately from some other sources, instead of the official source, other uh, vendors will sometimes bundle in adware into the installer or even worse, malware. So the hashes are provided to make sure that no one has tampered with the installation files. I've already downloaded the installer onto my PC. And here it is, set up image burn, and it's in my downloads folder. And I've also navigated there in PowerShell. So now I'm going to determine the hash for that installation file. So this is the hash that PowerShell has provided for that setup program. However, you'll see that the algorithm that's used uh, by default is SHE256. But looking at their website, they're only giving CRC32, MD5, and SHA-1. So I'm going to use these two algorithms as window PowerShell does not support CRC32. So I'll just retype in that command and this time put a dash algorithm and let's try MD5 first. So that is the hash using the MD5 algorithm and you'll see that it does match. So that means this file has not been tampered with. But let's just try it one more time and this time we're going to use the SHA1 algorithm. And this is the SHA1 algorithm of that image burn setup file which once again does match what ImageBurn is saying on their website. So I feel fairly confident that my installation file has not been tampered with in any way. The last thing I'd like to demonstrate in this video is an alternative to using Windows PowerShell for generating and comparing cryptographic hashes for files. Here I'm using a free application called Hash Tool, and I downloaded this from the Microsoft Store, which is Microsoft's official app store for Windows 10, similar to the app stores for iOS and Android. So to go to the Microsoft Store, you just go to the Start menu and type in Microsoft Store. And open it, and then you can go to the search bar and just type in Hash Tool. And it shows up right here with this green icon. And since mine's is already installed and opened, I'm unable to install it, but yours would be prompted with an installation button instead of my launch button. But this is how you could download and install it for free. So now that I have it open here on my desktop, let's go ahead and select those three text files that we had used earlier in PowerShell. So when I open them, you'll see the file name and these are the hashes that are generated. And by default, this program uses the MD5 hash. But let's suppose I want to use the SHA256 instead. I'll select them again. And they've been generated again with those values. And if you compare, you'll see that these are the exact same values that would have been generated using Windows PowerShell, but instead in a, perhaps a more friendly and intuitive uh, GUI interface. Thank you for watching my video about cryptographic hashes. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And also, while you're at it, please hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my YouTube channel as I'll be creating more content like this in the future. Thank you for watching and have a great day.